Now let's go over bucket sword today. And bucket sword is also known as bin sword. It's a distributed sword that arranges elements into several buckets. So what does that mean? It means that we are going to have buckets and numbers are going to be pushed into these buckets. Now there are two factors that's really important when we consider bucket sort. And the first one is the input array. And what I mean by is that more specifically, we are more concerned about the range of inputs. And I'll explain why this is important. And another one is the size of each bucket. What size determines is how many elements or unique elements can be in this each individual bucket. Let's say the size is three. That means we can have three elements here, three here, three here. When I say three, I mean unique elements. For example, we might have numbers like negative three, negative two, negative one here, and something like one two zero zero and zero as you can see this one has three unique elements although we have three zeros in there number of elements are five but we have three unique elements now on these each and individual buckets we are going to then sort using another sorting algorithm for our case we are going to use insertion sort after we put our elements into our buckets we are going to sort these using insertion sort, sort this one using insertion sort, sort this one using insertion sort, and so on and so forth. Now bucket sort works well if the elements are evenly, this is really important, distributed over the bucket ranges. So what that means is, let's say that we have 100 elements in our input array. And if it happened to be the case that our element somehow ended up at the first bucket, that would be really bad, right? First of all, other buckets, they would be wasted and we would just have to use insertion sort only on the first one. So that's bad because we are just literally just doing insertion sort. Now, if it was the case that we had 10 buckets and we had 10 elements in each, now that's evenly distributed, right? So that's better. The complexity is determined by the individual sorting algorithm used in the sorting of the bucket. Again, for our purposes, it's going to be insertion sort. Bucket sort requires more space to create more buckets if you have unevenly distributed elements. Now, what does that mean more specifically? Let's say that we have an array with three elements. And the first one or the smallest number is one and the maximum is thousand. So that means that the range of numbers are going to be from one through thousand. And the other number that we have is zero. Now, if we have a big range, that means that we're going to have big or larger number of buckets. So that means it's going to take extra O of K space. And if it was the case that our range happened to be really small, so in this case, one to three, our O of K will be relatively smaller, right? Because we need less buckets. Now for the first one, we need larger buckets, as I said before. And why is that the case? It's because if we have a larger bucket, it's better because buckets will likely to be evenly distributed, meaning that we won't have so many values or so many elements into one specific bucket. And if it was the other case, we want smaller buckets because since the range is not too wide, having smaller buckets will perform better and why is that might be the case well if we have elements that are close together we might have better chance of having an array that might be already sorted and two things i forgot to mention for elements with larger or bigger gaps or ranges it's better to use insertion sort and for these it's better to use merge sort or quick sort but for all the uh, solutions that we are going to code we are just going to stick with insertion sort now let's just briefly go over the time and space complexity and we're going to assume that again we are going to use insertion sort o of n comes from the number of elements in our array and o of k is the number of buckets and again remember o of k is going to be bigger and bigger if the range is big and if this is not so clear to you, I'll show you with the code later and that might be easier to see. So base case is going to be O of n plus k when elements are evenly distributed throughout the bucket where O of n is for creating the bucket and O of k is 
sorting the bucket with insertion sort. Insertion sort has the best case of O of n as its best case. So O of k is going to be representing these individual buckets or bucket. Now average case is also O of n plus k and worst is O of n squared. This comes from insertion sort and O of n squared is the worst case for insertion sort and I don't think we have to go over insertion sort I think you should know how it works by now and if you don't just go back to the insertion sort video where we talk about the whole thing and space complexity is going to be O of n plus k where k is the number of buckets and obviously n is the number of elements in our array if you guys find this helpful make sure you guys like and subscribe thanks now let's go over how exactly bucket sort work and Let's say that we have our array. So in this array, we are handling positives, negatives, and duplicates. And there is something else that we have to set also, and that's going to be size of each bucket. And let's just say three items for now. Next, what we have to do is we have to determine the count of buckets for our elements to be stored in. So that's going to be determined by max minus min. We're going to divide that by size and add one to it. So our max is three, our min is negative three, and our size happened to be three. If you were to simplify this, it would be six, six over three plus one. So that's equal to three, right? That means that we are going to have three buckets. So these are our buckets. And since our size is three, that means that this is going to have three elements, three elements, or actually three unique elements. Next thing we have to do is we have to find the index for each of the numbers that we are going to push into. This one is found by current value minus min, and we just divide that by the size. For our case, we are actually going to skip the math part and we'll just distribute it later. And there is actually one thing that I forgot to kind of mention in the intro video, and that is how the buckets or the range of the values that the buckets are going to store. And that's actually determined by n over k, where n is the input array length and k is the size. So we have how many elements? We have eight elements and we set our size to be three. And this is going to be two point something, right? And if you were to round down, that will be two. So each bucket would have a range of two. Now, if you were to just do all this operation and put all our elements into our respective indexes, that would give us a result of something like this. Now, as you can see, we have this as our first bucket, second, and third. And we just have one three in here, so three here. And as you can see, the range between our max and min number for this bucket is two, and it's also two here. And we just have only one element, but we are going to have elements three, four, and five if it was the case that we had more elements. So the range of elements are two. So from negative three to negative one is only two. That is again represented by n over k. Now, after we put all the elements into our buckets, what we do is we just run insertion sort. That will give us a result of this as our almost sorted array. Well, we are actually done sorting. To be more exact, we just have to combine our result. And what we can do is we can use a in place method or we can just put all these elements into a new output array and we will have our final sorted array. Now, you notice that our first bucket was actually sorted, right? And this is obviously a best case for us because if it was a case that they were all sorted, our insertion sort would run at O of n time and that's where our O of n plus k came from. So this would be obviously the best case. And if it was the case that we had a really bad formula for our index and if, if we had a bucket of something like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, and 3, and 2 empty buckets, obviously that wouldn't be working so well for us. We want our elements again to be evenly distributed and we have a range of 2 here, 2 here for all our buckets and it happened to be the case that our first one was sorted which is good and obviously this one doesn't need any sorting because it only has one element and we only had to do only operations on this second array that we have so that's it for bucket sort just remember that we are initializing our bucket 
with this number of buckets and we set a size for our bucket and you can change this to whatever you like and we push our elements into this array and it happened to be the case that our elements are pretty okay evenly distributed now let's go over our solution using in place method and since we are using in place method we are actually going to have a better space complexity because we are obviously again using in place method to get our sorted result and we don't need to make an another auxiliary array to store our result now our function is going to take three parameters and that's going to be array our input array and next one is going to be the size and this is going to re represent the bucket size so for each bucket we are going to have three unique elements only step two we want to create a insertion store function and since this is something that we covered probably early on i won't be going into detail for this one next we need to get our min and max value next we need a variable to track our index and this index is going to be used in our in place method next we want to get the number of buckets that we are going to create and make sure to have at least one bucket and next we want to initialize our bucket with number of buckets that we got from above we want to obviously push or fill it with empty arrays now we want to iterate through all the elements in our array we want to get the index for or bucket index for each element and we want to push in that current element to that bucket index next we want to iterate through the buckets we want to run insertion sort to sort our elements or our bucket and we want to iterate on the sorted bucket then use in place method to override our input array and finally we are going to return our sorted array so that's it for our pseudo code and give it a go this shouldn't be too hard it should be relative easy compared to other sorting algorithms but give it a go because that's the imp most important part and if you're stuck if you can't go on anymore just come back later now let's start coding first thing i want to do is i want to create my insertion sort function and if you know how insertion sort work you can just skip a few minutes first thing i want to do is i want to iterate through my array now i want to create a variable to store my current value and that's going to be array at index i next i need to declare a variable to keep the track of my previous elements and as long as the index is greater than zero and my current value is less than the previous element not prev j minus one what I want to do is I want to overwrite array and index j with the previous one. So I'm technically moving all the elements to the right. And I want to decorate by one each time. So when while loop is done, what I want to do is I want to insert the element to the correct place. So that's going to be array at index j and that's going to be equal to current value. And finally, I want to return my array. Okay, that looks good. So let's just test if this really worked. So insertion sort and pass in our input array and this should be i is equal to and you can see that our insertion sort is looking good everything sorted so let's just minimize this since we are not focusing on how insertion sort work okay i'm just going to get rid of this so first thing i need to do is i want, i need to find my max and min values so my min now i need my index that i'm going to use when i replace elements in my original input array next i need to get my buckets count so let's call it bucket count that's going to be equal to math dot four we are going to do max minus min to get our range of values and divide that by size and finally we add one and if it was the case that this evaluated to something lower than one so it'll be decimal it will be round down to zero and adding one to that later ensures that we at least have one bucket now i need to initialize my bucket that's going to be equal to array from passing a length of bucket count and fill it up with empty arrays let's just log our bucket as you can see we have three empty buckets and i actually want to rename this to buckets okay next thing i want to do is i want to iterate to all the elements in our array and i want to just use for each you can just use a for loop if you like next i need to declare a variable to get my bucket index and this is going to be rounded down 
pass in the current value minus min divided by size. Finally, I want to push my current value into that bucket index. So buckets at bucket index push in my current value. Okay, that looks good. Let's just console log our buckets to see what we get. As you can see, we have three elements in our array. And that was the range that we got before, right, from our illustration. So range is two, range is two, and we have one last element here. And remember that duplicate duplicates are inserted into the same bucket. So as long as we have three unique elements, which we pass to the size of three, that's good. Now let's just get rid of this. And what we need to do is we need to iterate to all the elements in our buckets. So buckets that I'm just going to use for each again. And let's just call it bucket because we are actually iterating through each bucket. Now, what we want to do is we want to use insertion sort to sort our each and individual bucket. And after this is sorted, what we want to do is we want to use in place method to override our input array. So we want bucket dot for each, for each current value, what we want to do is array at index, we want to increment each time and set this equal to our current value. And finally, if we were to return our array, you can see that our array is sorted. So that looks good, right? And let's just uncomment this to see if it really worked. We have elements starting at negative 100 all the way to 99. And everything looks sorted. So we have a bunch of duplicates, negatives, positive, it handles all the cases. Now let's go over our code just one more time. And actually, let's just console log our buckets here just to get a better understanding. So as you can see, we have our buckets. And since the range of the numbers was really big, you can see that we have a lot of buckets and that's extra space, right? And as you can see, the range is two for all the elements. And we only have maximum of three unique elements in each bucket. So that's it for our bucket. And let's change our bucket size to five. And if you were to change that, you can see that we have a lot more elements in each bucket, but the number of buckets are obviously lower. And if you were to change this to something like 10, now more elements are in there, but we have less and less elements or buckets to be more exact. Now let's just change this to three again. So let's go over our code. So here we get the bucket count, the number of buckets that we want, and we put it into our buckets and we initialize it with empty arrays. We are iterating through all the elements in our array, created our bucket index to put our current value and we pushed it in there. And after we did all that, we went to our buckets and for each bucket, we sorted it and after we sorted it, we use in place method to save some space. And after we're done with that, we finally returned our array. So that's it for bucket sort. And as you can see, pretty much all the work is actually done by insertion sort. All the code that we wrote for the bucket sort itself is actually really relatively straightforward, right? We are just pushing in the elements. We are iterating through our buckets and passing the bucket to our insertion sort so that it sorts them. After it was sorted, we use in place method to sort our original input array. So that's it for bucket sort using in place method along with insertion sort. Now let's go over our next solution. And for this one is going to be our typical bucket sort because we are not going to use in place method and we'll use reuse to make this more interesting. First thing you want to do is again, create a function that takes in two parameters, which is going to be array and our bucket size. We want to create our insertion sort function. And I created that already here and I just minimized it because we are here to learn bucket sort, not insertion sort. Next, we want to find our maximum values. We want to initialize our bucket with correct number of buckets. Next, we want to iterate through our array and push in the element to the current bucket index. And finally, using reduce, we want to sort each element and append it to the result array. Now, finally, we are going to return our sorted array. So this is our pseudocode. The code itself is going to look almost 90% the same as our first solution. Our only difference is, I think, step six. So definitely do give a try. Implement what you learned. Now let's start coding our solution. First thing I want is I want to get the max value. And next I need my min. And I actually don't need my index this time because we're not using in place method. Now I need to create my buckets. This is going to be array.from 
we do pass in a length of math dot four. We subtract max minus min. So that's our range. Divide that by size. And we want to add one to that because we want at least one bucket. And we initialize with empty arrays. Okay, so that looks good. And something's wrong here. Math dot four. Oh yeah, you forgot to pass in length. Okay, so we have our bucket. And if you were to console log our buckets, we should have three buckets in them. Okay, so that looks good. Next, we need to iterate through array, and I'll just use for each. And for each current value, I want to get my index first. So let's call it bucket index. We want to pass in our current value minus min divided by size. And we want to push our current element into that index. So buckets at bucket index and we want to push our current value let's just console log our bucket to see what we got okay so it looks good we have range of two and three unique elements in our array so let's just get rid of that and our final line so on buckets we want to run reduce pass in our accumulator current value well current value is actually our bucket right so you can just name it bucket here to be more exact this is going to return an array we spread all the elements that we got and we are going to use insertion sort on our bucket and we have our sorted array so insertion sort is going to run on each individual work bucket which is going to store all the elements in our accumulator and our accumulator finally later is going to spread all the elements and give us our result and if you were to comment this out and just check if it really worked so array with 10 hundred random elements you can see that everything is looking good. So that's it for our bucket sort. Steps all the way through here is the same, only different was this line where we use reduce instead of a for loop. Now let's go over our time and space complexity for our bucket sort. And we are going to assume that we are using insertion sort for sorting of our elements. Now O of n will obviously come from our input array, so number of elements in our array, and O of k is going to represent the number of buckets that we create. So for our best case, it's going to have a time complexity of O of n plus k when elements are distributed evenly through the bucket, and O of n is for creating the bucket, and O of k is for sorting the bucket with insertion sort that has best case of O of n, and average is going to to be the same next is going to be our worst case and this happens when all the elements are in the same bucket so that means that all other buckets they're just wasted right they're just empty we are just performing operations only on that one bucket so that's going to be o of n squared which if you think about it is exactly the same as the worst case for insertion sort and lastly our space complexity is going to be o of n plus k where o of n is the original input array and k is the number of buckets that we create for our buckets so that's it for our bucket sort and next we will go over shell sort if you guys find this helpful make sure you guys like and subscribe thanks